Hello everyone, Stephen and Andrea from Pin in the Atlas. I'm gonna give you a good look at these rolling hills in the background. The highway that we've just pulled off of. Heading towards, how do you pronounce that? Mogollon. And what is Mogollon? Mogollon is a ghost town built in the 1880s. Now, we've already had a really exciting morning and take a look at this. Look at these bighorn sheep. Whoa, just jumped over the fence, made light of that. <laughs> oh, amazing. Gone to get some water. Oh, they're going to have a little spat. And we will leave the bighorn sheep in peace. you enjoyed seeing those big horn sheep now let's go and explore Mogollon Just off the side of the road on the way down into town is this structure. Just built into the side of the road. Excuse me, the side of the mountain. At the top you can see there was like a sliding barn door. But there are no steps any longer. And this would have been the only way in. Don't know what this was for though. So here we are on the outskirts of Mogollon. And as you can see behind us, just right over here, they've painted the clock on the rock face and it says it is four o'clock. That means it's happy hour all the time. <laughs> Stick with us. We really think you're gonna enjoy the first visuals of this old ghost town. It is uh, different than anything else we've ever seen. So stick with us, stay tuned, let's go exploring. We are still on the outskirts of town. We looked up and we seen these old tracks. We're gonna follow them, see where they lead to. Misc. Old storage shed, workshop storage shed. And what would this be? What would that be? Would that be a like air tank? Air tank? First of all, I thought maybe this had been done for tourists, but this is a genuine mine, mine shaft, and it goes back quite a way behind that cover. That's a... 
So even though they put another grate and a sheet up there, there's obviously wind can get through there and we are feeling blasts of wind. So this is a genuine mine. I'm about to correct an error. This is a water tank, not an air tank. You can see there's water valves on closer inspection. And there's a water pipe that runs up through the mountain. And then just up above, there is an in-memory plaque. Clifford Edward James. 1898 to 1985. Now, if this isn't one of the greatest entrances to a ghost town that you've ever seen, I don't know what is. Look at these bridges that span the little waterway. Now there's not much in there, but um, back in, what was it, 2012 did you say? Yeah, 2012. The uh, a massive flood came right the way down here, washed out all the road, and the 15 residents were stranded for quite some time. That would have been quite scary. Now, with it a little bit more full, that would be absolutely picturesque, don't you think? Continuing along the street here, just take a look at these buildings all the stucco work in here. J.P. Holland General Store. Unfortunately it is closed today. Would love to get in there. Look at that. So this general store is now the hotel, the Silver Creek Hotel. It was built in 1885 and it used to be known as Mogollon House and it's the most haunted building here. But I don't know the story about the ghost. Took a few steps back just so we could get another look at the buildings on this side of the street as well. Now this one doesn't have anything on the facade to say what it is. Not sure if it might be extra rooms for the, the hotel just right next across the street here. Because if you look up in the windows, there's like some, some plants and things in there. So, not sure. But look at how the old windows, the old arches above the windows and the doorway. I've been filled in now. And this Holland's Furniture and Notions. There's some old items up in the top. I know there's some glare. Like on this one, old Maxwell House coffee can. Would love to get inside these old buildings. Here next door looks brand new building or brand new front on the building here, stucco work, nice paint work. This is the museum. And then directly across, look at that. These are just some really, really unique, cool structures here. Like Andrew said, when this was flooded, it covered the street. So that must have been quite the hair-raising experience. Glad all of this is still standing though. This is one unique ghost town. So I don't know what these are. Little rooms that have been chiseled out into the rock probably maybe for cold storage, but there's several. We've tried to peek in, but it's too dark. We can't see anything. Um, and there's another one further up that I noticed. So let's take a look. bolted shut but how strange they've got uh, metal 
up here, um, I wouldn't have thought that they would have been used for storing gunpowder for the mines, because this obviously was a, a main mining community back in the day. So uh, let us know what you think they are. This is Archer's Park. As you can see straight ahead, there's another room in the rock there. So they probably just use that for equipment now, but I wonder what they were used for. Come and see there's a the bridge walking over. The rest of the park's over that way. So let's continue down Main Street. Just walked over to the other entrance of the park and here underneath this awning is a unique piece. On the side of it, it says, Relic of the day when men were men and they brewed their own. So that had to be something to do with brewing. And it looks like unfortunately here, this may be a casualty of the flood. You can see there's some steps, a rock foundation, and then parts of it have just crumbled away. A unique find in the wall. And then just next to it, got a shell, and then another piece of pottery up here. About to cross that bridge, go over to the other side of town. And here's some more relics of the past and there's some more oh, relics keep lining up along this old stone wall here some pretty neat old pieces size of these. Look at the gearing. That's really cool. And what has Andrea found over here? Gold was discovered here back in the 1870s and by 1880 it became a mining town. You can hear how peaceful it is now with only 15 residents but can you imagine the humdrum, the hustle and the bustle back in the day when 6,000 miners were gambling, shooting and swearing and doing what miners do. This town had one of the worst reputations for miners, gamblers, gunslingers, bank robbers, you name it, they were here. So at one point, this town had five saloons, two restaurants, two hotels, two red light districts, a photographer, a theater, a bakery, and an ice maker and it used to be the main stagecoach route. Now in one year between 1872 and 1873, the stagecoach was robbed by the same person 23 times before he was apprehended. Now back in the 1970s, 1973 to be exact, Hollywood came to town. Let's take a look. So the general store that you see behind me, that isn't original, that's a Hollywood touch. So in 1973, the film My Name Is Nobody was filmed here. And if you remember that old spaghetti western, it had Henry Fonda and Terence Hill starring in it. Now this little unassuming building right next to the general store that Hollywood built for the movie is the original Silver Creek Stage Stop from 1910 to 1942. And I see some stuff in the window, so let's walk up and take a look. I 
Ah. Pretty interesting insight, isn't it? Some more interesting facts about this little stage stop. It ran daily, and it did service many of the outlying towns in this area. Now, it did an average of 85 miles a day, and it took them 15 hours to complete it. Could you imagine that journey? So I've just found some wild mint. Smells lovely. Smell that. Pop it in your tea. I'm gonna continue up. This looks kind of interesting to me. It's open and okay. There's some skulls in here. And another thing I like about these buildings, they used part of nature as the wall and just built up on it. All right, so turning back and heading out, here's some of those old cars. Don't know if these are original or if these were left over from the movie. Magion Theater. Sign says 1915. So I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark and say that's probably when it was built. And that's the same year that the electricity, water and telephones came to town. Hmm. Interesting. There's old Mogion Woodworks. That is closed. Next door to this is the Kelly store. Look at the visible gas pump there. At the far end of town now, not too much else over here. But this is an original cabin from the 1880s that has been lovingly been restored. Then just across from it, as a later cabin that has not been. While traipsing through, we're gonna be on our way to the cemetery here in a moment. There are some wild gourds that are just growing along the side of the road. Isn't that cool? And then you should recognize this. Do you remember what it's called? It's called mullen. You use the leaves to wipe your bot bot and you use the seed heads for torches. We are en route to find the old cemetery. Had to take a slight detour to see this though. Just resting in the hillside. Pretty unique.
looking back down over the valley, just kind of going to show you the state of the road. We're told it's 4x4, four four high clearance, pretty steep. Those are true. On the way up though, we kept thinking we should just go back and get Tonto, because he would easily make this. Not sure how much further we've got to go. I hope we're nearing the, uh, the top. And... Aha! I see a sign that says cemetery. Hopefully it doesn't have an arrow pointing to a direction that says five miles this way. Hey, how did you get up here so fast? These here are the ruins of the old powder room. So powder room, for those of you that don't know, this is mining area, so they would use dynamite, store dynamite in here, or any type of explosive that they were using. And another fun fact, the cemetery that we're still not quite at yet is built on solid rock. So they needed dynamite to blow the graves open. Isn't that neat? As you can see, they required some pretty heavy duty hinges just in case any accidents happened. Which unfortunately looks like it did happen. So after that one and a half steep ascent up Graveyard Gulch, we finally made it to the cemetery. Did you hear that? Spooky! So in addition to a lot of miners dying from access accidents and also uh, the main mine here, Fanny Mine, uh, had very it was a very dry, dusty mine so they got a lot of lung problems so they died. Um, but also Spanish influenza wiped out hundreds of people throughout the town back in the early 1900s. They do have some really neat headstones here, like this granite one of 1918, 1916, 1908. That one can't, can't really read. 1923. This is a different cemetery than I'm sure we're all used to seeing. Just trees and plant life all over. And it's a very rocky surface. Now this is a family plot. They most the majority all passed away in 1918 within days of each other. So I believe these were victims of the Spanish influenza. I find it sad when you wander through these old cemeteries and you find these graves with no name, just a wooden cross for a marker. They've been forgotten to time. I'm always fascinated with graveyards or cemeteries. Not in a morbid way, but just in a... It's interesting to see people, people's lives, and although it's very sad, death is very sad, I find cemeteries very calming and peaceful, and if you think about it, no one or nothing ever truly truly dies. Their energy always lives on. So I don't know if you can see behind me that huge tailing pile and the hoisting rig. That is the remains of the little Fanny mine. Now that was the main employer 
for the town of Moguillon. And I mentioned earlier that back in the day, this mine employed nearly, well, between 3,000 and 6,000 miners. Now, unfortunately, the miners, their term at the mine was short-lived, a maximum of three years, because the dust was so bad, it gave them major lung problems. So black lung, or also known as silicosis, now, not only did the miners have to struggle with the remoteness of the location, we're eight miles from the road, at a height of nearly 7,000 feet, but also, and the weather in the winters got really, really bad, but they also had to deal with fire, flood, and numerous Apache raids. 1952 there was a major fire here and that was the same year that the Little Fanny Mine closed down. That was the downside to Moguillon and it soon became a ghost town. Over here just to the left of the Little Fanny Mine on a different ridge across the canyon there's a bunch of water tanks and things over there. Not sure if that's connected or if that's on private property or what that is. But just wanted to show that those are right here. Now this huge boulder is very significant to the town of Moguillon. The town of Moguillon or the gold discovered in Moguillon was discovered by Sergeant James Cooney. Now he served in the military and was based down in Alma. Once he finished serving, he went back up to Moguillon and mined his claim. Several years later, he was down here and got attacked by Indians, and this was where he died. His brother decided to entomb him in this huge boulder, and the story goes that inside it's lined with the silver that was mined from the Cooney mine. So you might be wondering why we're sitting outside the Purple Onion. Well, there's a reason for that. This brightly colored building behind used to be the post office. Now, the original post office was in the general store along with the library and a store, and then it moved here and then this place behind us became the post office until 1952. That's what we read. However, a local said that they did have a post office here right up until the late 1960s. And as you know, once the post office is gone, that's when the town becomes a ghost town. So we hope you all enjoyed the tour through Mogollon today. I hope I said that right. So, <laughs> or as the locals say, Moggy Yun. Yeah, there we go. Moggy Yun. So, as always, we hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, follow us, check out our website, pinintheatlas.com, and we will see you guys on our next adventure. Bye.